Because I can't do anything else. Valerie, can you hear me? So she may be muted. Is the owl on? Yes. Uh, Shot it. No, I can hear you. Thank you. Oh, we can see you and hear you. Yep. Yep. If it can, if it can break, I will break it for you. Hi, John, how are you? Okay. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. Yeah. People can't. Name of the person who paid to format the report. Hi, Judy. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Great. Amanda Robinson. I don't think it's not. Okay, what do we got here? We've got energy. Um, well, we have four of us. Let's see if anybody else So there was some good turnout for the group, it sounds like. It was. people, that's a lot. Yeah, no, it was a good turnout. I had no way of this. I had no idea how big the turnout was going to be. Yeah. I, I mean, I was seems, hoping, but. That seems yeah. like a, a lot. Okay. <laughs> I haven't done a big meeting like that since the new town hall and the new fire department, really, right? Yeah, the yeah. biggest meetings that I can remember, there were two, and one was just slipped my mind. But one was we had to turn away people. It was standing room only when the board of selectmen was considering charging at the transfer <laughs> <laughs> center. We must have had 300. <laughs> when was that? A number of years ago, probably 15 years ago. 
And then there was another one we had with a huge turnout. People didn't ask for that transfer station. Oh, that was, I'll tell you. And they were angry. Because <laughs> I grew up in Western Virginia, and like that's not a thing. Like yeah. nobody goes to the transfer station in like Fairfield County. So moving out here, I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> What's so that? Okay. We'll just start with the uh, four of us at 701, meeting call to order. Angie DeCento. I'm here. Kopak. Yeah. Carl Varga. Jesse said he might um, join us later. Kevin uh, Austin. Christina Davis. Present. Esther Jagazinski. Never comes. And Hugh McKinsey. Oh, Garth Bean. Okay, so I'm going to seat Christina for Garth. Who is who is the person sitting next to Mr. Folletti? Who? Oh, okay. He carried a black placard with your name, <laughs> and then she'll recognize you. It's the beard. <laughs> Nobody's seen the beard. He's incognito. It doesn't look like the owl seeing everybody else. Uh, Judy, I'm having trouble hearing. I don't know why. Um, anyway. I'll try to talk louder and have everybody else talk louder. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you. I'm afraid if I touch it, I'll break it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, for communications, I sent you guys um, some information on um, what it submitted for our budget, the BOF. And um, sent you the information of the um, school budget presentation that we could look at prior to them talking about it. And what else did I send you? Um, well, I the, think that was it for there now. Was the classroom size projected. Oh, yep, the classroom size projected. I sent that tonight, so sorry for the short notice, but I just got it. <clears throat> Um, the other thing for communications is they had quite a turnout for the um, the land at the end of 89 and Lake Chafee. Uh, let Bill uh, elaborate on the, the feelings that went on there. <laughs> and we don't public comments. You guys are at any comments? No comments. And we're moving on to a motion to approve the minutes for January 26, 2023. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Okay. <laughs> Angie motioned, Christina Davis second. All right, I'll try to slow down. Yeah. Okay, any discussion? Are you raising your hand, Angie? Nope. 
Okay. <laughs> it was raised, but it wasn't. I thought going you were anything. following meeting protocol, raising your hand to the chair for my attention. <laughs> I'll have to go like that if I need you. <laughs> okay. So that's, thank you. Okay. So motion to approve the minutes of January 26, 2023. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes with four except. Next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes for the meeting of Thursday, February 9th, 2023. Do I have a motion? I'll motion. <laughs> Go ahead, Angie. <laughs> I'll second. <laughs> Judy Austin motions first, Angie second. Do we have any corrections? The only thing I would suggest is adding the first name um, under new business B. That's Ms. Amanda Robinson, just so we have the full name in the record. Uh, what did I do here? Okay, new business, um, Mr. Pilletti. Vote. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> All those in favor for the meeting with the um, correction for Thursday, February 9th, 2023, please say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. That was for you, Bill. I hate that. Is word. What? I hate that word. I hear <laughs> you like it. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to report on a few things, we had a um, um, Saturday morning um, on the 11th. Angie, can you hear him? Yes. Thank you. Hi, Angie. Um, Saturday morning, we had a meeting, a town meeting with a public, preceded by a uh, public hearing on the roof bond issue of $5 million. Very well attended. Um, the motion ended up passing 99 to 1. And um, wow. so, so that is proceeding. Um, I've had discussions with bond council who is preparing all the additional appropriate pay, uh, paperwork. And I, I happened to run into um, the chairman of the building committee um, this morning. We had a structure fire here in town and I stopped by afterwards. Um, and we had a, an opportunity to have a brief discussion and we both feel it's important to keep the ball rolling and the um, next point of action will be calling a meeting of the building committee to develop a scope of uh, work and services for architectural uh, firm to start developing final plans um, and bid documents and that sort of thing. Uh, Mr. Rupert did indicate probably what we're gonna do is consult with the uh, project manager that handled the EO Smith roof last year um, mm. and kind of pick his brain a little bit to, if they learned anything the hard way, maybe we can avoid doing that. Um, so that's proceeding. Um, as it sits right now, we're anticipating construction to start the spring of uh, probably in June um, of 24. So uh, it's, it seems a little ways away, but it really isn't. It'll be here before we know it. But all in all, it was a good turnout, good discussion. Uh, public hearing was very informative. And uh, so we're rolling with that. 
Monday night, the planning and zoning had a public hearing. Um, then I left this building close to midnight. Um, that was also very well attended. Actually, at one point through Zoom, um, and this was strictly a Zoom meeting, which all of theirs are right now. Um, I had a, a count of 137 participating in that. And um, the developers, which is Campanelli Construction and Steve Redalakis uh, combined, brought forward a, uh, a proposal and made a presentation for about an hour uh, for basically about 120 acre uh, warehouse development at the Exit 72 site. And um, after their presentation, the floor was open for discussion and uh, probably a large number of people, larger than those in favor of the project, uh, expressed concerns and had questions about the development. Um, well suited uh, direction uh, questions, uh, primarily about environmental uh, impact, traffic impact, lighting impact, uh, water pollution, fire suppression, that sort of thing. And um, it went that late and the chairman of the, the planning and zoning continued the meeting till their March meeting. So I know there were a few, I think Judy or one of them was having some communication problems being able to make comments or whatever, um, but it is going to be continued. No action was taken by the um, planning and zoning. This was for a uh, an amendment to the existing zone up there, the industrial uh, zone on 84. And uh, from there, if that does pass the planning and zoning, then it will go to the special permitting process. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, excuse me, could I uh, say something? Sure. Could I say something? Certainly. Okay. Um, of course, I was there taking notes. I'm not a member of the commission, but um, I just wanted to say that uh, there's no uh, building uh, idea has been put forth as yet. So if it were to, if the wording changes were to be passed, um, then they would have to submit the proposal of what they want to build there, which they haven't done yet. And yet a lot of the discussion that they presented was actually about uh, a building. And uh, they had, um, I wanted to tell you that you can see their full presentation and all you have to do is on your computer, type in Campanelli. Um, you, you really can just type in Campanelli Ashford. And what you will get is you will get the Ashford um, proposal by Campanelli and you will see their their presentation that they made uh, if you're interested. I couldn't find it on our website, but it is supposed to be on there. But if you just type in Campanelli Ashford, uh, it will come up um, Ashford uh, zoning, whatever, and you can look at the thing. I think you have to download it, but you can look at it. So yeah, I you, download, you download it, and then the presentation is on there. Um, so anyway, uh, what they're talking about is, is refining the language that exists up there in the uh, in industrial incentive zone, development zone. And under the existing permit, um, they could build four or five separate smaller buildings on that same site. And what they're proposing is to build a single building in the area of a million square feet on the site. And their, their presentation indicated they felt that they would have much less impervious surfaces included in, in doing that scheme of things, as well as much more open space. But, um, as Valerie had indicated, it is in very preliminary stages. Uh, there's only schematic drawings at this point. Um, it would be during the special 
permit process if it gets that far, then they would develop more refined plans and actually then be in a situation they would, where they would go before the uh, Inland Wetland Commission and the various other boards um, that would want to uh, go in. I also understand that their presentation, I haven't seen it on that means, but is also on the Department of Eco Economic Development, uh, Our Town, Our Future webpage. Um, so you, you, you might be able also to go through that uh, avenue. The, the thing that it impresses me and that, that I think is vital for our community um, is the potential impact on the formula on our taxes, our tax base. Right now, we're one of the few communities in this entire region that is as dependent as we are on the real estate taxes. Right now, about 93% of our real, real estate taxes are on the shoulders of our, our, our residential residents and private property. Um, with the figures that they presented to us, and I think they have to be refined a bit, um, that would change between 10 and 13% to bring it from the residential tax base to the commercial side. Um, I've had our assessor doing some research and I'll have more information for everybody on it. But if you look at Willington, for example, their uh, real estate or residential tax base is about 81% and 19% commercial. Um, my guess is, I, I, I think probably Mansfield is skewed much more on the commercial side. But what we're trying to do is take take a look at communities in our area. But anyway, that that's one of the things that that appeals to me the most is trying to take some of the burden off of our local real estate tax burden. Um, you know, I made a point, I made brief comments, and it was probably after 11.30, I'm not sure if anybody was still up, but um, <laughs> we did a little research and the census at the school in 93 and 94, compared to the census as of last Friday, we have 222 students less than we had then. Uh, obviously, our expenses continue to go up because it's, it's the nature of the thing, and our stu our, our teacher student ratio goes up. But while it's not the sole thing that, that that's impacting the reduction in students, certainly people considering to move to this community that's part of the consideration, and I, I think plays a role in it um, in why our school has lost that many. So. But anyway, I would encourage everybody, as, as anybody that's asked me, I said, try to keep an open mind, ask your questions, they're healthy, and uh, let the process proceed. So that's where we are. I just also did a couple of things. You guys probably have already done it, change the subject here. Looking at the uh, the audit report, and I happen to have a discussion with, with one of the auditors on uh, Wednesday. We calculated what the undesignated fund balance is as compared to the overall budget experience. And as you know, the, the, the Board of Finance year to year has tried to be within the 10 to 15% uh, for the undesignated fund balance. And the ratio we have, which was effective, of course, the June 30 of, of 22, was 14.4%, which is helpful, um, very helpful, in fact. There's, there's a number of towns, like our treasurer works full-time for the town of Sterling. They carry no undesignated fund balance, wow. nor do they have any debt service. They pay for their debts pretty much immediately as they <laughs> expend it, where we do some. Um, our debt service this year is going to drop down to a low that we haven't seen in many years. I think, Judy. That's going to um, drop down to uh, 220000 or something less than what it was last year. So um, 2023 will be 220, but 2024 will be 30,000. 
So for two years, 2024 and 2025, before the school starts. Well, um, that's great news in the in the short term. In the long term, then we have another five million dollar bond that we're going to be adding on to that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I thought that was interesting. Um, also effective uh, June 30th, we have a CNR capital non reoccurring fund of um, $623,000 in change. Uh, we've spent approximately, I just asked for a quick breakdown of that. What was that again? Oh. $623,026. That's in the existing CNR fund effective June 30th. We have allocated from that fund because it was in our CNR capital expenditure fund in our last budget to date about 300,000. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to, to get a refined figure because I know in that figure we had also agreed or the, the town approved uh, an allocation of 135,000 towards the tank replacement up at the school. And they're going to contribute an equal amount from their non-lapsing fund. Um, I have a question. What do, what's the um, the rest of it allocated to? Do you know? Helen? Oh well, there's a number of things. I, I I think the 300 are are the things that we had already committed the lease the lease to purchase on the fire truck that we bought. Um, the roller that we bought came out of that. Um, the new fire truck. Yeah, the one we we took delivery of this year. It was on a, a lease basis, lease to purchase. I think it was like 74000 a year. I mean, it's things like that that have already been committed to would have been deducted. And I asked Laura, are you going to stop by? Are you off tomorrow? Yes. You stop by. I, I did ask Laura if she can share if she could do, do a printout for me. Um, now, there was 300000 also dedicated but it was going to be an offsetting expense for the Kittle Wrap property, but we did not get that grant. So that's going to cancel itself out. That will not be coming off of the capital money of current fund. And we'll be reapplying. Uh, we're not sure the form we're going to uh, put that in for, but we'll be re reapplying for that. The, the big question that you folks are going to be addressing, and hopefully my board can make a some sort of a recommendation for you will be what we anticipate having left over uh, in our budget this year that your board can consider appropriating the capital non reoccurring fund for our costs coming up next in next year's budget. And, and the other thing that you'll be considering is what you, what you want to maintain for a uh, non designated fund balance. You know, somewhere between the 10 and the 15%. Um, what we've tried to do over the years, and the last couple of years we've had difficulties, uh, was in, increase the capital non reoccurring fund. Because um, what that does, I'm sure you're all aware of it, if we can allocate it from the capital non reoccurring fund, you minimize the impact on the mill rate. The only so other basically, you kind of want to sock money away in that CNR fund. Correct. Correct. And you work it into your five year plan. Mm -hmm. That's why you try to plan ahead when, when's the next ambulance going to be needed, the, the dump truck or whatever, and you work it up that. So it doesn't have a direct immediate impact on the mill rate. Right. That um, the only other thing I just mentioned to you folks, it seems to go easy. I probably shouldn't say anything. It seems to be going pretty smoothly right now for the. Uh, fuel tank replacement up at the school. We're anticipating that project to be starting um, the third or fourth week in June. They may be doing some preliminary work up there. And uh, as long as everything goes the way it's laid out right now, we'll have that project completed by the uh, beginning of school year. That's all I have, unless anybody has any questions or anything did, to help with. Did we get a fuel tank yet for the um, town garage? It's delivered. It's still in the approval of our building department, but it is there. It's installed. 
uh, it has not been filled yet. We won't do that until we get a, a final sign off from uh, our building department on it. Also, another thing out of the ARPA funds um, that, that has been completed, I don't know if you come in the front door, but our ADA uh, automated door has been installed here at town office building. We had one here at this door, but uh, we put one in up at the front. That's it. Awesome. Thank you. Good stuff. Okay. Moving on to old business. Um, I sent you guys out the budget for the school 2023-2024 for um, discussion. Um, there's there's a couple comments that I have to make um, about the process, and and like maybe one or two things that I noticed when I looked at it. But um, so the the positive remarks I have to make is I really thought that um, Cindy did an awesome job and the Board of Ed really um, did some really good negotiations with the um, with the um, unions. Um, they were thoughtful. They dug in uh, as much as they could. Um, I'm a little disappointed in the union in a, in a way. Um, because our student count is going down while we're soaring high in costs, but we'll get to that later. Judy, I, I didn't understand. Our student health? The student count. The student, health, the student enrollment oh. has been going down since uh, oh, okay. 2019. I think we had like 410. And I think we're down to like I think it was 367 or something like that. Yeah. I'm going to verify that count though. Um, but the, the thing that troubled me the most, I guess, was the original superintendent's budget um, that they spoke about during the Board of Ed was 2.03%. Um, I don't know what happened to bring it up to the 4.17%, but I'd like to believe that somebody can explain that in a logical way to me, especially this year. Um, so I'll leave that at that. Okay. As far as the budget, like I said, I thought they did a really good job. I just don't understand. I don't understand that. And, and that doesn't build trust. I don't understand why it came out that way. And I don't know if I have anybody on here to answer to that. So Judy, you don't think they'll explain it when they present it to us? I'm hoping they will. It's one of the okay. questions I have. Sure, okay. Yeah. Okay. When is that presentation? Is um, it next week? I don't. I remember the 19th or something. Or was that when they had this submitted by? Uh, hang on. I have a schedule upstairs, but I didn't bring no, it No, that's right. I can get out of this and see if I can find my, I got the regular meetings. Bear with me, a lot of stuff. I'm thinking it's next week, but I could be wrong. Budget calendar, okay, here we go. Let's see. March 3rd, Ashford School budget presents the BOM by BOE. 
So March 3rd, Angie. Did I ask? <laughs> I asked. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, That's okay. Christina. See, I, like I would have said I forgot. Okay, thank you for an answering my question. <laughs> uh, yeah, March 3rd. And then next week is general government and capital improvement plan. Correct. Um, and Bill, I guess we'll um no, I forget her name. Sherry. Will Sherry have any information about Yale Smith yet? She got it in this week. Okay. So I'll get let's see if I can get that tomorrow too. And I believe it's a two hundred and ten or two hundred and twenty thousand dollar increase. I guess their enrollment has gone up a bit this week, this year. Oh, lucky us. Luck of the draw, right? We lucked out last year. They did a heck of a job on it. When you're based on and tuition to a certain extent, you're always vulnerable. Okay. So, anybody have any questions on the budget yet? Or do you want to just digest it and look at it and see if there's something that pops up? Judy, I don't know if it's on the budget, but are you going to be representing the Board of Finance and the Capital yes. uh, Committee? Good. Okay. Yes, I will be. I'm going to um, try to call that meeting next week. Okay. You haven't gotten any budget documents yet, right? No. Yeah. You guys haven't, right? Yeah. No, I asked her um, last week. She was close to combining everything, but she wasn't quite there yet. So that's why I was going to stop in tomorrow and see if we'll have something next week. Not the only things I've gotten, I got forwarded to you guys. I don't get much mail. Be grateful. I know. I, believe me, I get enough at work to you know, keep it busy. Um, So the, the only other thing that I noticed with the school budget and that I'd like to ask about is the um, the equipment. I know that they're looking at buying new equipment, new computers. Um, I'd like to he hear, you know, what happened. Did, didn't we a couple of years ago change from something to Chrome or? <clears throat> they were going to change from the IMAX to the I. No, what it was was to, uh, Craig wanted to acquire Chromebooks for elementary, yes. so kindergarten through fourth. Mm -hmm. Then that didn't end up happening. So right now, it's like fifth through eighth has one to one um, MacBooks, and then you know Mac computers in the library and that kind of stuff. But the elementary never ended up getting. The one to one Chromebooks. Yeah, I thought it said in the presentation that they were getting iPads for the fifth grade. I, I know there was a large sum to equipment like a couple of years ago, and I saw it through the um, uh, the past budgets. And I can't remember like where I saw it. It was quick before I left. But I don't know why we're still going on Apple. Uh -huh. I don't know why we're still doing Apple. I thought the plan was to get away from that. this. Well, that was Craig's plan. Right. Oh, but then didn't, he didn't get to You're right. <clears throat> but the price difference was the same. Yeah, you know, from, 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 uh, yeah so. Mm -hmm. so, anyway, what I'd like to um, challenge you guys with is to uh, send me your questions next week so that we can um, organize the meeting to um, you know, cover all our questions at one time instead of back and forth, back and forth. Um, I'll take your emails and you guys can speak to that one at a time and we can see if we can expedite the process and uh, get our questions answered for at least the school.
Judy, if you don't mind, I'm going to excuse myself. Unless there's some other questions. Oh, cool. Are we done with the budget? Does anybody have anything they want to do right now? Ask. Okay. Um, so old business B, election of the Board of uh, Finance Clerk. I won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I got to keep bringing it up. I nominate Paul Harder. <laughs> yeah, he's not here. I don't yeah. teach him. Yeah. Like to like All right, folks, have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you. See you. So, you guys know the rule for the handbook of uh, Connecticut Board of Finance. The Board of Finance is required to choose one of its members to be a chairman and to select a clerk. If there is a tie vote among the board members and officers are not chosen within one month of the board election, the board's election, the board of selectmen or chief executive officer of the municipality must choose officers from the membership of the board of finance. The clerk calls special meetings of the board of, of the board at the discretion of the chair, men or upon <clears throat> written requests of two members. He must he or she must prepare and file with the clerk a copy of the minutes and the records of the regular <laughs> meeting within 48 hours from the date of the meeting. So that's that's the um, responsibilities is to um, call special meetings and then pre prepare and file with the clerk a copy of the minutes and the records of the regular meetings and special meetings. And then if I don't show up, that person would sit in for me, but I, I don't miss much. I could always cancel a meeting too. So just so if you guys are worried about how much is involved. Um, Paul did an awesome job, but I really think he burnt himself out with uh, overextending himself. Plus he works for a living, so. We thank you, Paul, if you're going to hear this. We're trying to find your replacement. Okay. Agenda for the next meeting. Let's go back to my. I found it. Hang on one second, please. So agenda for the next meeting is the general government budget presented to the BOF by the BOS, Board of Finance by the Board of Selectmen and a capital improvement plan presented to the Board of Finance by the Board of Selectmen. Though um, we really don't have a team together, I guess, yeah. They're talking about it next week, so we'll see how, how that goes. Um, uh, so Judy? Yep. I was wondering if I, if I, am I the only one that needs the Zoom? because um, I could try to come to the meetings. I just don't know if everybody's had their shots and boosters and are safe, I don't know. Angie, it all depends on how you feel and don't feel guilty about not coming. I, I'm sure I can speak for the rest of the board members. Your health is most important. So if you're uncomfortable or if you have a reason, don't fret. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And it seems like there are other members that are taking advantage of the hybrid. So it's not like you're the only one. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Good Paul thing. and Jesse have called in several times. So, yeah. Yeah, because they're working. So, 
Oh, happy President's Day. What was that? Happy President's Day. And you can come to my basketball tournament this Sunday. I play basketball for Thomas Edison. What is that? You're going to want to send, like, get him to leave the meeting. Yeah. But you can come to my game first. Are we done with the agenda? Just um, yeah, hang on. Um, so remarks for the good of the board. Um, so you guys take your time, go through what we have from um, the school. Make sure that we, um, you know, review and send me your questions ahead of time. <laughs> So I can allocate the time for each of you guys. And let's see if we can get the um, questions answered. Hopefully, I will uh, be able to forward those to uh, Cindy Pryor so she can have um, some responses ready. And we'll see if we can smooth out this process. Okay. Okay. for the good of the board. Um, can, you, can you try to mute him so at least you don't have to hear him? You can come to my tournament first. Oh, the blue in the corner? I play this Sunday. No, that's not it. I'm going to stay small, fourth, and fifth. Are we done? Can I just motion to adjourn? Yes. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 See ya. Have Aye. a nice day. Who, hey Judy, who who made those motions?